First on the scene, crime photographer. Got it. Look for it in the Morning Express. Columbia brings you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Written by Charles Holden and played by Scott Cotsworth. Casey, ace cameraman of the Morning Express, covers the crime news of a great city. His adventure for tonight, two for a two. The city room of the Morning Express. Downstairs, the big presses are beginning to roll. Over in one corner, Henry Brower, one of the older rewrite men, sits at his desk, staring out of the window into the night. He turns as Casey, ace photographer of the Express, and reporter Ann Williams enter the room. Hi, Ann. Hello, Casey. Henry. Hi, Henry. Well, say, what's the matter with you? Looks like you'd lost your last friend. Yeah. You look sick, pal. Oh, no, no, I'm okay. Now, what's the matter, Henry? Oh, I don't know. I got the darndest feeling. I'd... It's kind of a fear, Ann. It's like a... Well, like I'm make... going to be dying all of a sudden. Dying? Huh? Oh, come on. You're healthier than a master sergeant. What's eating you, huh? Oh, I feel all right. It's not that. It's just... Did you ever feel that your number was up, Casey? Huh? You're about to check out. Oh, now, look here, pal. Talk sense. Hey, uh, anybody make any threats on your life? No. The finances in good shape? <laughs> well, no worse than usual. Family my size, my salary. Yeah. Huh. Well, I never did see how you could keep up, as a matter of fact. Hey, look, uh, could you use 50 bucks till payday? No, oh. no, nah, Casey, thanks. Gee, you kids are swell, but... I'm all right. I'd... Chuck, I'm sorry I cried all the way. Forget it, will you? That's okay. Now, yeah. tell me, uh, it's a funny fear you spoke of. It's got you... Centers around some special person, huh? Am I right? Yeah. Well, come on, Henry. You better tell us. It might help. Who is it? There's nothing I can put my finger on, Ann. It's a... It's a, it's a fellow I met three months ago. He, he gives me the... The willies. I... I wake up in a cold sweat and find out I've been dreaming about him. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's been nice enough to me, too. It's a... He saved me a big dental bill for one thing. Saved your dental bill? How? Yeah. Well, he did the work on me himself. He's, he's kind of a research scientist, I guess. What's his name? Renat. Renat? Huh? Yeah. He's got a country home out on River Road. He's not an accredited dentist, though, is he? Oh, no, no. He, no. he may have been once, but... I don't know. He's developing some new kind of metal for fillings. He offered to do all my dental work free just to try it out. Uh-uh. You should never have let him monkey with your teeth. Never let anybody but a real dentist do that. I know. I know, Casey, but... Well, I had a couple of teeth bothering me, and when he offered to fix them up for nothing, I couldn't resist it. Well, he kind of hypnotized me, I guess. It... He gives me the willies, I tell you. Henry, do you mind if I look at your teeth? No, no, go ahead. Hmm. Well, those just look like ordinary silver fillings. It's not very skillfully put in at that, Henry. You know, this guy's got no right to go around doing dental work without a certificate. What's his name again? George Renette. Well, how'd you meet him, anyhow? Well, my oldest boy, Rusty, works on a truck and delivers those big steel cylinders of bottle of gas. You know the kind the dentist use? Laughing gas. Yeah, I guess so. Well, anyway, Rusty took some out to Renette's, and, and Renette asked him if he knew anyone who wanted to... Have some free dental work done. Funny thing to ask. Well, yeah, it did seem a little screwy, but I had these teeth bothering me, and I was so hard up. Well, Renat seemed all right and said he just wanted a chance to try out his new type of filling. And said not to worry that he knew dentistry. Uh, I'd like to talk to that phony. Oh, no, Casey, don't get so upset. There's nothing to do about it now. It's all over. And... and well, besides, he made me promise not to tell anyone. Well, no wonder. There are laws about unlicensed guys doing things like that. He could get plenty. Now, this, uh, this fear of Renat you got hanging over you, how do you explain that, huh? Oh, that's just me. Nerves, I guess. 
I've had a lot on my mind. Bills and... You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, look. Why don't you sort of lay low for a day or two if you feel more like yourself? Stick around the office as much as you can, and if you do go out, don't go alone. Hey. What's in the back of your mind, Casey? Nothing. Yeah. As long as you feel low, just keep among friends, okay? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> you know, I feel a little better already. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Well, I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah, so, so long, Henry. Bye, Henry. So long. Bye. Take care of yourself. He is really tied up in bow knots, I isn't he? Say so, Annie. You know something? Just twice in my life I've had guys talk to me like that. And inside of a month, both those guys were dead. Dead? Yes, sir. Annie, the human mind is a very funny thing. Another thing, this friend of Henry's, guys, uh, guys that aren't dentists, don't just go around denting or whatever you call it just for the fun of it. We've got a motive. Any, I smell something very screwy here. Hello, Casey speaking. Uh, hello, Casey. Logan. Oh, well, Logan. What's the good word from your homicide department today? Now, listen, you know a guy named Henry Brower works at the Express? What? What's happened? Did he disappear? Yeah. Jump in, she talks His wife called headquarters here. He didn't come home all last night. Yeah? We've had an alert on him for over an hour. Hey, how'd you know he disappeared? Why, well, he, uh, he told me last night he had a feeling he was going to... Oh, well, that's uh, how it is, huh? Well, the bum took a powder, he walked no, out. No, no, Logan, no, he didn't. Don't but... tell me. Brower's got 3,000 bucks and outstanding bills around That town. doesn't make any difference. He did a fade trying to duck payments, that's all. You're nuts, Logan. He's a right guy. Right guys don't do things like that, But Casey. I tell you, Henry's got a wife and four kids. Well, does that make it any better? Oh, he's done a fade, I tell you. Sure, somebody didn't do him in. Well, we'll check on that, but nobody had a motive. He was just an unimportant little guy. I say he got sick of it all, and that's how I'm going to play it. Okay, Casey, if you hear anything, get in touch with me, will you? Yeah, yeah. Look, and I will. You okay? Oh, we'll catch up with him. Bye. Bye. Mm. So the little guy's premonition was right at that. Well, how are you two? Hi, Ethelbert. Hi. What Hi. brings you two here in the glare of the noonday sun? Huh? Why, Ethelbert, you know Casey can't think straight anywhere but here at the Blue Note. And besides, it's nice and cool. You want something? You don't, do you, this hour of the day? No, I don't. I don't know. Maybe a beer. Yeah, give me a beer. You can fix me an orange juice, Ethelbert, if that won't cost you your professional standing. <laughs> It's not a bad joke, Miss Williams. <laughs> not bad. Why, thank you. Say, <laughs> so, uh, speaking of jokes, did you hear that new radio comic last night? Oh, no. <laughs> no I, <laughs> I almost died laughing. All through his program, he kept saying, so-and-so spelled backwards is so-and-so. Like once he said, we will now hear from our all-girl orchestra. Girls make with the music. And remember, folks, Music spelled backwards is C I S U M. Kiss him. <laughs> oh, you get it, Casey? Oh, do I get it? Good. <laughs> Corn spelled backwards is Narok, I guess. Well, now, how about my beer? <laughs> okay. Here's your beer. What's the trouble, pal? He is thinking, Ethelbert, about the process of getting teeth filled. What's the matter, Casey? You got a toothache? No, I got a headache, Ethelbert. Very good friend of mine, Henry Brower, has disappeared. Oh, I know, Henry. You say he disappeared? He sure has. Yeah. Well, how? We don't know. Just dropped out of sight, that's all. And we've got next to nothing to go on. Nothing but my hunch that a quack that filled his teeth may have got something to do with this case. A dentist? Well, he isn't a dentist, Ethelbert. That's just it. He's some kind of a tin horn scientist. Maybe a nut, maybe he's a crook, maybe both. I don't know. He did this dental work for Henry for free. Who is this amateur tooth carpenter? What's his name? A well, named Renat. Lives out on the river road. Why don't you go out and see him, Casey? That is definitely my plan, pal. I've got to do a little groundwork first. Police headquarters? Yeah. 
suppose I have a look over their files. I don't know quite where to start, though. Logan has decided that Henry simply took a powder and scrammed it. So, you know Logan. When his mind gets made up, it's like a sealed tomb. Why does Logan always have to act like such a goof? Maybe he'll be different this time. Remember, folks, goof spelled backwards is food. <laughs> oh, Ethelbert, look, for Pete's sake, can that silly root. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Annie. Uh, th- th- I got it. Look, I got it. You got what? Well, I've got something to start on anyway. It really took that crazy gag to stop my brain working. Goose spelled backwards as food. <laughs> Ethelbert, what time is it? Uh, just noon. Noon, eh? Yeah, but remember, folks, noon spelled backwards is... Huh? N-O-O-N. Yeah, Casey, that's the Tanner case you're thinking of. Colorado in 1931. 1931, yep, that's it. I remember it well, Logan. This guy Tanner was a cattleman. He was robbed, and then he was trampled to death by his own herd cattle. Right? Yep, yep, yep. And there was never any solution to the robbery. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, what's that got to do with Henry Brower's disappearance? <laughs> well, don't look now, but I got one of my hunches, Logan. Two cases tie up beautifully. Oh, Casey, I think you're nuts. You and your hunches. Henry Brower ran away, I tell you. He's trying to beat his credit. Logan, I tell you, Henry wouldn't do a thing like that. All right, now I'm going to find him. That guy is in trouble. I bet he could use a bit of help right now. <laughs> I don't see him. In the corner of the cellar there. Come on. Well, Mr. Bra, how do you feel? <laughs> Funny, but with that gag on your puss, I don't understand a word you say. I don't try to struggle. You're tied up pretty well, you know. What do you do if he dies, George? He doesn't look so good. So much the better. Now, take that gag out of his mouth. What are you going to do? I ask him a few questions. Go on, take it off. Okay. There. Water. Water. Shut up, you. What are you going to do to me? Well, sucker, tomorrow is your last day. But you can't do that. <laughs> I... I never did anything to you, please, for that. I've got a wife and four kids. You can't... Shut up, I say. Will you give me just a little water? I'll get him some, Faye. There's a glass by the laundry tub. Okay. Water, please. You know what the police are saying about you, Henry? No, what? Well, they say that you disappeared because you owe so many bills. Here's the water. Oh, now, Henry, I'll hold it for you right at you. Please, please, please. But before you drink, I've got one little question I want answered. Did you ever tell anyone about my fixing your teeth for you? No, no. Not even that son of yours, Rusty? I did what you said. He never knew I came out here after that first time. And nobody water. knows, huh? Nobody, please give me some water. Please give me oh, sure. spare. Yeah. Please. Uh, 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 uh. please. I learned what I want to know, Faye. I'll put the gag back. Oh, no, no, Phil. Don't worry, sucker. Tomorrow it'll be all over. Come on, Kay. <laughs> George, do you think he did tell anyone? No, I'm sure he didn't. I've had that guy scared to death ever since he first came out here. Listen, darling, nothing can go wrong, can it? Don't worry, it ain't a chance, babe, because this time I'm taking no chances at all. Oh, I hate the suspense, but, but I suppose this job will put us on easy feet for the rest of our lives, huh? That's right, baby. For the rest of our lives. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Casey, do you suppose the cops are right? Do you think Dad just ran away? No, Rusty, I don't. I think somebody's doing him dirt, and that's why I came to you. 
Uh, you're willing to string along with me, are you? Uh, sure, Mr. Casey. Gee, I'll do anything to find Dad. Sure. All right, I've got to start somewhere, Rusty. Your dad seemed to have a strange sort of fear, this fellow Renat. Why, he hardly knew him. Just that once when he went out there with me. And besides, why would he want to hurt my dad? Uh, it's a funny world, Rusty. As we don't know. All right, now we've got to work fast. You've got to straight what I want you to do. I can't go wrong. The nitrous oxide tanks have a blue label marked N2O. Uh-huh. The air tanks always have just a green label. Good kid. And I can depend on you? I'll deliver them out there in an hour. Mr. Renat, there's your regular replacement on the bottled gas. I'm a little ahead of schedule, but I can't always get out here in the country. Uh, that's all right. I use that gas in my experiments almost daily. Hey, uh, by the way, is your father turned up yet? No, we haven't heard a thing from him. Oh, that's terrible. Well, he's probably just up on a log somewhere, huh? <laughs> I'm sure it'll work out all right. Yeah, Mr. Renat, I think maybe it will. Okay, Annie. That's Renat's house right over there. Now, look, you just stay right in the car. Don't make a sound. Don't get upset or anything like Casey, that. Casey, if your hunch is right, Renat's a dangerous man. I wish you wouldn't go in there alone. Ah, never mind. I can take care of myself. Look, if I don't come out in half an hour, beat it to the nearest farmhouse and telephone Logan right away. Will you let me go with you? No, i got to play this alone, Annie. Now, don't you worry. I'll be careful. I'll see that you do. Good luck. Okay, honey. Yes? Does Mr. Renat live here? Who are you? I'm a friend of uh, Henry Brower. He sent me out here. You, you've been talking to him? Yeah, you see, miss, I got a toothache, something awful. He told me that Mr. Renat might kind of fix me up. Uh, just a minute, please. Wait right out there in the porch, will you? Yeah, okay, okay. George. Yeah, baby? Who Some is guy. it? guy. You know, he says that he knows Henry Brower, and, and Henry sent him here. Henry sent him? Ah, you're crazy. I tell you, he said Henry Brower sent him. Huh. Does he look like a copper? Oh, I don't know. Oh, George, don't let anything happen. Ah, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Huh. Yeah, he might be a plant from the police. I'd better see him. Be careful, George. Please be careful. Don't worry. By the way, what do you want? He says that Henry told him that he could get a tooth fixed out here. Oh. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah. Huh. I'll be doing his work. I'll make him pay for that. Okay, Faye. There's only one way to play it. Get this guy in here. I'll promise to fix his tooth, give him gas, and I'll knock him off. Do you have to? Oh, we can't lose a nerve now. Oh, but darling... Get him in here, I say. Okay. Okay. Won't you come in? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mr. Renat, I uh, got a little toothache here. I was wondering if you could fix me up. Why don't you go to a dentist? Well, they're not open at night. Oh. The thing started acting up, and I suddenly thought of you. Yeah? Yeah, Henry Brower told me about you. But I don't do that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> don't kid me now. I've heard of a black market even in dentistry, eh, Renat? <laughs> I'm not a dentist, I tell you. Oh, I know you're not a licensed one, but you could help me out. I got a really terrible toothache here. It's awful. Well... Uh, all right, Mr. Uh, uh, Casey, Casey. Oh, Mr. Casey. Uh, come on into my lab. Maybe I can't fix that tooth for you. Right this way, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, ah, if you'll just sit in the chair there. Huh? Huh? Oh, just a plain chair, huh? Yeah, that's right. I told you I wasn't a dentist. You'll have to put up with what I have. Now, uh, I mean, where's the tooth that hurts? Gee, I don't really know exactly. It's... Sort of a general ache all down those sides. I'll find it. Uh, there it is. Uh, oh! oh that hurts. That hurts. Afraid I'll have to give you gas. Huh? Does that hurt? No, uh, not in the least. Here, here, just adjust this over your nose. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Turn it on, Faye. 
Now, breathe deeply, Mr. Casey. In just a few moments, you won't be able to remember a thing. He's a phony, all right. He hasn't got a cavity in his head. His teeth are perfect. Oh, I thought so. Is he unconscious? He ought to be. I've given him up for ten men. You know, I think he's wise to it. Oh, George, I knew this was risky. We should never have tried it again. We got away with it in Colorado, but... Well, of course, you, you picked a nobody for the fall guy. But it isn't working out this time. Ah, don't worry. This Casey is probably a friend of Henry Brower who got suspicious of me when Henry disappeared. Probably just came out to investigate. Well, we'll soon fix that. We'll just get rid of Mr. Casey. But how? I think a little of that hypodermic of my own special form of there will do it. Yeah, there's one ready in the cabinet. But, but you don't want two bodies to be found here after the fire. Oh, no, brother, it's going to work out all right, Faye. Oh. We'll get rid of this slug tonight. Burn the house down tomorrow. We'll find Mr. Brower's body, whose dental work I fixed to exactly match my own. They'll identify him as me. You'll collect my insurance and meet me inside of six months in Havana. Everything just as we planned. I only hope we get away with it, that's all. We will. Don't worry. Now, give him some more gas. Aren't you afraid you'll smother me? Why? Oh. What? what? You can't. Oh, you don't, you don't, don't you swine. Don't you kill him. Drug him. Drug him. Oh, oh, my arm. There. Guess that'll teach you, Mr. Tanner. Tanner. Oh, you freak. Give my arm. You don't deny your Tanner. Colorado, 1931. You're just a creep. Ow. All right, all right. I'm Tanner. Let me go. All right, now, Tanner, where's Henry? He's I'll talk. He's in the cellar. Is he alive? Yeah, we haven't heard him. He's alive. He'd better be. Pick him up. Come on, Ray. Logan. Oh, Casey, you all right? Oh, sure, Annie, I'm all right, sure. When you went inside, I couldn't wait half an hour. I just drove up to the next farmhouse and called Logan. Yeah, I got here as fast as I could. Well, Logan, my hunch was right. I know, we followed you in. We were right outside the lab door. Then you heard? Every word. Believe me, it'll be used against you. We're gone, as Faye. You'd better not talk. That's more like it. All right, keep him covered, Logan. I'm going down to get Henry. <laughs> Renat and Faye will soon be departing. Yeah. Ethelbert, my fine feathered friend, the same, please. <laughs> and the drinks are still on me tonight. You know, Henry is feeling much better. I noticed he? that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming up. Thank you. You know, Casey, I still don't see how you pinned this whole thing on Renat. How did you? Well, Ethelbert, I tell you, I was naturally suspicious of a non dentist doing all that fancy dental work. You know, there's only one sure way to check on the identity, if you'll pardon the expression, Henry, of a well-burned corpse. Yeah, um, I nearly was just that, too. Yeah. Oh, what brother. this guy was doing was building himself a case, you see. He made over Henry's dental work to match his own. You see, Tanner tried that trick once before in Colorado, and he got away with it. He dressed some poor guy in his clothes, killed him, and then made it look as though he himself had been trampled to death in, uh, in a stampede. Then he studied dentistry, huh? But Casey, when you was in the lab there taking that gas, what'd you do? Hold your breath? Hmm. Rusty worked that one out. He switched labels on the gas he delivered. I just pretended to be unconscious, Ethelbert. You know me. I was never unconscious. I was breathing plain air all the time. The only way I could think of to get a confession out of him. Oh, but... How'd you ever connect this bloke up with that case in Colorado? How'd you know he was ten? <laughs> well, this really is going to kill me to admit it, Ethelbert, but uh, it was when you were doing all that backward talk, you remember? And remember, folks, Renat, spelt backwards, is... Uh, P-A-N-N-E-R. Well, how do you like that? Tanner. Tanner? Yeah, Tanner. <laughs> Well, I'll be doggone. You've been listening to Crime.
Crime Photographer, written by Charles Holden and based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Casey is played by Stotts Cotsworth and Anne by Miss Leslie Woods. Original music composed and conducted by Archie Blyer. And the Blue Note pianist is Herman Chittison. Crime Photographer is produced by John Deeks and directed tonight by Rocco Tito. Crime Photographer will be heard again next Monday at this same time, after which it will return to the air Thursday, August 8th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time under commercial sponsorship. This is Bob Hyde inviting you to join us again next Monday at this same time for another fast-moving adventure with Casey, Crime Photographer. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.